Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f up. <laughs> You're listening to Believe You Me with Michael the Count Bisbing. You know my name yet? And Anthony Lionheart Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. We've got a special guest in town. It is the return of the one, the only Anthony Lionheart Smith. Big smile on your face. Big smile yeah. on my face. I guarantee a big smile on the believers all over the world. The people of Uganda, Australia, Uganda. Venezuela, <laughs> wherever you are right now, they're like, finally. We haven't got to listen to those three dipshits alone. Now we've got a fourth dipshit. Anthony, how you been, man? I've been good. I've been good, man. It's I'm glad to be back. Uh you know, me and you were talking off air a little bit. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of a child. I go through my shit sometimes and uh, got back to my therapist. I've been pretty open about just my up and downs and all the other BS that happens in my brain. But um, I feel like this, like sitting here and talking to you in this podcast has been like, it's like a different type of therapy for me. So I was I'm really excited. I was like well, pumped but- all morning. Oh, really? I was. You know, I was excited. You have a certain aura ab- about you, a glow about you. And I'm not just talking about the teeth. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I like doing this. I really do. So when I miss it, uh, it bothers me. I don't like it. No, no, man. I'm telling you, it hasn't been the same. Listen, uh, we had some great people filling in. And obviously, Hamilton, I, we always bust his balls. He does a great job. Does. But I do love our conversations. And the time just absolutely flies by. Uh, so it is good to have you back but you're good though yeah yeah i'm all good um i made it through the weekend my wife went to a bachelorette party uh oh God. she went oh skiing God. yeah she went skiing in colorado so since thursday it's been me and these four kids which typically typically is not that big of a deal i you know we just rock out and have a good time but she couldn't have picked a busier weekend to leave we had basketball games and wrestling tournaments i think i went to like seven basketball games in a completely different city an hour away back and forth like three times and then a wrestling tournament yesterday. So was busy and I'm happy that she's home. A lot of steps as well. You know, Rebecca's got me uh, monitoring the steps on our iPhone lately. And I definitely feel like an old man. I posted last week on Instagram a story. This is how you know you're getting old. When when, when you look at going for a walk with the dog as a form of exercise. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's great. We did uh, 2.2 miles there. Uh, my weekend... I said I was going to do a live for UFC Mexico. We're mm-hmm. going to get into that in a minute, but we didn't. We've got a family table uh, near the kitchen, big, big old table, real good quality wood. Been there. It was there when we moved in, but it's really good. But it's, 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 we've lived there 13 years now. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's a mess. And we've been saying forever, we're going to sand it back. We're going to retreat it, restain it and all the rest of it. Anyway, I started doing that. I put the paint stripper on. Mm-hmm. Jesus, you want to talk about a workout? Fuck me. <laughs> trying to- <laughs> Sweating like a maniac. And then once I started, it just, it just, well, it, you, you got to finish yeah, it. You can't you know? stop. <laughs> you can't stop. I've just finished the last coat of uh polyurethane sealer this morning at 7.30 a.m., Word of wise, just buy a new table, everyone. The amount of time <laughs> I put into that, right? Time yeah. is money. Yeah, what's so your time sh- worth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't do the live. I mean, I could have been doing a lot more productive things. And Rebecca, number one, as I'm doing it, she starts freaking out because she actually said, she said this line, I'm having anxiety, Michael, about the amount of sawdust in the house. I'm like, well, what do you think's going to happen? I've got to sand it back. There was sawdust everywhere. She's like, you got to stop. you got to stop now. I'm like, I can't stop. We've got right. to finish the job. And anyway, then when I've I've, I've put the, the finish on and everything, she just walks over just before, about 20 minutes ago, because it's still drying, mm-hmm. with her stupid big like hydro flask, bloody Stanley thing, <laughs> yeah. clogs it down, and there's a big circle. Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, Almost as stupid as Brian Ortega rolling his ankle as he's getting introduced by Bruce Buffer. That's that's like things that nightmares are made out of. That's I mean, like how many times have you thought before you're walking out or like that you made weight, you're hydrating, you're in your bed. And then like all these scenarios like, what? what happens if I get in the elevator and the elevator falls three floors and I break my leg? Like you, you come up with all of this crazy shit in your head and it happened to Brian Ortega. What happens if Dan Henderson knocks me in the 
out? What happens if I get kicked in the head? What if, what if I zig when I should have zagged? To be honest, I never contemplate what happens if I jump up in the air in the intro and roll my ankle. I really fell for Brian because he'd been away for two years, as we mm -hmm. know, one of the best featherweights in the game. Uh, very excited about his comeback. Him versus Yaya Rodriguez was a great fight, but on paper, mm -hmm. an incredible fight. And then he rolls his ankle. He's kicking it out. He's walking up and down. I'm like, the poor guy. But it certainly did oh. not affect him in the audience. Look at this. You can see that definitely hurt him. That's stress. Well, because, Damn you it. know, in terms of anxiety-inducing moments, when you're in the octagon, like, that's one of the worst. You know what I mean? That, when Buffy's, that very second. That moment there. That moment there is the peak. The peak of freak the out. Like, <laughs> look hard. <laughs> look tough. Right, pretend I'm not bothered. Ah, I'm and you just beg the buffer drags it out as long <laughs> as possible. <laughs> like, right. don't we got some sponsors we got to introduce yeah, here? Yeah. Like, does someone want to get inducted in the Hall of Fame before this? As soon as they say fight, that's all out the window. Yeah. Then you're yeah. an autopilot. But that moment right there, that's when like, should I have ran more? Should I have lifted weights? He looks strong. Can I stop his takedowns? Can I take his best shots? Shit, I've just broken my ankle. So yeah. not the best start, but it was a great performance. Good to see Brian Ortega back. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, the play, I, I think MMA is just a better place when Brian Ortega is around. I think the division really needs him right now. They just, they kind of, I think he's in this weird place where I wouldn't call him like, a, I don't mean this in a negative sense, but like he's not a journeyman because he's not been as active uh, the last handful of years. But uh, he, it's an interesting introduction into back into the the division with the top guy. A, a finish over Yair Rodriguez means something. That's a really big deal. Yeah, no, absolutely. And certainly when you look at the division now, obviously we haven't had you one since uh, Ilya Taporia mm -hmm. became the main man at featherweight. He's going to need competition. Now, probably Volkanovski gets the immediate rematch. But if for some reason that doesn't happen, Brian Ortega might just be the guy. He might have to be the guy. He might have to be the guy. Like, and because I haven't been on, I'll just kind of watching that watching that fight with Taporia and Volkanovski. I I I left that fight, and I don't know how you felt about it or what you've said about it, but I left that. Does it even watch the show? Not only does he not do it, he doesn't even watch it. Well, then I get, then I get a bad case of FOMO because then I'm like, you know, my feelings are all hurt. I, I don't know if Volkanovski can beat Taporia. I I don't know if he can. I think that on paper, it's a really close, really well-matched fight. But then when you've seen it take place, it seemed like there was too many mountains for Volkanovski to climb. He's not... He's not known for being a, like a devastating finisher, uh, especially against super dangerous guys. He he's always ahead a little bit. He's always super fast. He's you know I can go on and on and on about the things that he does that are incredible. But I just feel like Tapori is he's such a full package that you need a guy that's got like that X factor finishing ability. And Ortega seems to be that kind of a guy. It seems more of an interesting matchup to me because of the jiu-jitsu and finishing abilities of Brian Ortega. Mm, yeah, I mean, just touch it. Maybe that's a hot take, down. and I don't mean for that to be a hot take. It just... No. I, I, I is impossible is. To take, he's impossible to take down. Even if you get him there, he's a high-level black belt. We've seen what he did to Bryce Mitchell. And he's not, he's not afraid to stand in the pocket and do it safely with a guy like Josh Emmett. Don't get me wrong here. With the, I mean this with the most respect. Volkanovski is nowhere near the devastating, dangerous striker that Josh Emmett is. So I, I just, I, I don't know. I see this being like, maybe it's just a matchups thing. I think it's just mm. an impossible matchup for Volkanovski. Or maybe, I mean, because listen, we all love Volkanovski. One of yeah. the best, one of the best humans that we've had in the UFC in recent memory. He's just an awesome guy, right? So no one's going to talk shit about him, but he is 35. Yeah, You know, and that whole, whole whole old man thing. And even though Volk looked good in round one, and I probably am repeating the show a bit, but probably gave him round one or it was really, really close. It wasn't like yeah. he was outclassed. No. Uh, but his coach came out, I forget his name, not his coach. Yeah, one of his coaches basically said that Elia Taporia had a puncher's chance and he landed the punch. And a lot of people are talking a bit of shit there. Listen, the coaches are going to say that. You know, they're well, going to say what they need. He's supposed to say that, correct? Yeah, I don't think it was a puncher's chance, and who knows? Maybe the rematch might be different, or maybe, maybe, maybe he's had his time, and only time will tell, right? 
You know, I don't think that's always... If that's the case. Oh, he's had a great time of it. Yeah. We always see it. It's a tale as old as as time, much like uh, Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. (laughs) Uh, You go to the top, you stay there for a while, you reside Mm -hmm. there, you're renting that place. That top of the... That that place at the top of the sport is not yours. You don't own it. You're only renting it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe Tapori is the new landlord. Maybe Especially at lower weight classes. Out. Especially at the lower weight classes. You can hang around a little longer at the top as you get older. But Tapori's like, get out. This is my yeah. house now. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Um, so Brian Ortega, potentially, after Volkanovski, mm-hmm. or if not, before Volkanovski. Well done to him. Yai Rodriguez looked good in that first round, though. Dropped mm-hmm. him. Looked yeah. really, really good. I tell you what, I thought Ortega's boxing. That's looked really good as well. He looked dangerous, but as always, got the job done with yeah. the jujitsu. What did you think of that finish? I mean, it's kind of textbook, Brian Ortega. He's just he, he's so fundamentally sound, and he's adjusted. You know, his he had high level jujitsu before all this MMA stuff. So the way that he just he, as he adjusted it. I think early on he had a lot of submissions from the bottom, a lot of guillotines, triangles. Like now seeing him dominate from the top, uh, it's just another a whole nother wrinkle and a whole nother danger. Yeah. Did you see uh the video of him and his coach on Instagram afterwards talking about the fight? Hmm. Brian, oh Harrington, Harrington, let's jump on the show. Let's see. Right before we started the show, everyone, Harrington was probably the most stressed out I've ever seen him. <laughs> he was in the studios. There was a lot of noise. There was a lot of feedback. There was a lot of shit going on. And Harrington looked like he was going to have a panic attack. Seems like the panic attack is still going because he's not here. Are you there, Harrington? Yeah, I'm here. I was just looking for the video you were asking for. Um, you sound a little. Are still you still panicking? A little, yeah, are you still panicking? I am. I am. My computer stopped working five minutes before the show was supposed to start. So now I'm on this setup that I that I'm not very familiar with. Can I add to your anxiety and tell you that doesn't sound like you're coming through a microphone, brother? No, I <laughs> I know for a fact that I'm not because to come through a microphone here would just be a feedback loop. It'd be a nightmare, which is why I'm trying oh. to get my PC fixed while I'm doing this show. It's been very okay very fun afternoon. It's a great time that you chose to like really do maintenance on your PC. Like right <laughs> as the show was about to start, you timed it perfectly. Good job, good job. Clear off, get out of here. Go, 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 go. Push some knobs and fiddle with some buttons. Um, in the main event, and given it's the return of the great Anthony Smith, I thought Anthony's going to deliver Brandon Royval for us. I tried. I tried. But Roy Val got, got a sensational victor of a, of a Brandon Moreno. I'll throw the ball to you in just a second. I thought if anyone can get Roy Val, it's Anthony Smith. Didn't happen. It didn't. I, I'm I'm <laughs> telling you, he's probably drunk in a Mexican ditch somewhere right now. But uh, I tried. Probably so. Yeah, he deserves that. I I tried. I was really hoping to get him. Maybe we can. Maybe I can connect him with you Thursday. We can get him on Thursday. Either way, either way. Yeah. Oh, good. Tell us about the fight. What did you think? Okay, so I think we talked on here how I didn't like that he was taking this fight. Like, a little bit short notice, coming off of that title fight loss. Brandon's a super emotional person. I don't know if you guys could tell, but he was crying on his octagon walk. That yeah. That's who he is. He's a, he's a really emotional person. He does a pretty good job of using it to his advantage, but... um. I just thought maybe it was an emotional decision, like that home run mentality. If I can just go there and and get a win and erase it, it'll all go away and I'll feel better about myself. And sometimes you get the win, kind of like I did with Gustafson, but you never really fix the problems that that created the issue that you're in. So I was worried about it and and more so his reasoning. So then the the fight starts and the first couple rounds are not really going his way. He seems like he banged his leg up his foot and he was kind of struggling with it he's his range was off he 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 wasn't cutting the angles he just he didn't look great early and i was worried that like i don't know just as a fighter and and you've been there like is he in there now and realizing he doesn't want to be there or like maybe this was a bad idea or maybe I, i wasn't ready mentally or whatever so i was worried about that and then you just seen him start to like slowly work his way back into it. It was like he kind of dug himself a hole those first couple of rounds and and started to dig out of it, started to ignore the 
uh, started to ignore the the I don't know the the leg issue and being behind. He was really listening to Mark Montoya, and he just kind of climbed out of the hole and won the next two rounds. and And I think it came down to the fifth round, which was really really close. I thought the fight was razor close, but mm. um, it, anytime you can be in a fight that close with Brandon Moreno, uh, I think that I think that he did himself. Uh, some justice and kind of proving that maybe the title fight was a fluke. And, and that's what he believes that he can win the second time around. I, I thought that his adjustments in fight with the body kicks and, and uh, kind of started flinching or like fainting that knee to throw it up uh, as Moreno would kind of get his head off line. He started throwing that knee and Moreno would stop doing it, which stopped the right hand from laying in as much. I thought he made some really, really, I think he matured a lot from the first fight to the second. I think he really, sometimes you, Sometimes you have to learn things in a fight. And I've never seen Brandon fight like that over five rounds at a super high level. He's either – he's always chasing this finish, right? Because he's so he's so exciting. He's always looking for the finish, and he puts himself in bad spots to try to get it. And I thought this was the first time that I've seen Brandon methodically just chip away at the lead when he's from behind and not trying to sell out on a finish and just continually try to just – kind of chopped that tree down and by the end of it he ended up ahead and i i thought that he matured a lot in that fight it's funny because we were just talking about when you're walking out and you're feeling that nerves and the anxiety and the pressure and all the rest of it and as you mentioned Roy Val visibly emotional walking out there but once the fight started i, I thought he had a really good performance mm-hmm. i didn't score it round by round but i do remember thinking quite confidently i think roy val got that moreno's a tremendous fighter so it shows how much roy val a how uh, how high his potential is and b how much he's continuing to improve and even though he took that on short notice put together great combinations avoided the takedowns for the most part because i know in the first fight that he got taken down you know, pretty much at will from Moreno before mm-hmm. getting finished. Um, so he's definitely improved. I thought he won. I, I, I think, I think if anything, Moreno. Uh, so yeah, Moreno is the one that's going to be kind of kicking himself today because you know it just wasn't enough output from him. I thought some of the combinations that Roy Val were putting together towards the end they were brilliant. But as you say. Uh, he showed a little bit of his personality on the microphone afterwards. <laughs> I'm yeah, a maybe, gangster. Yeah, maybe he needs a little bit of media coaching because he can't. <laughs> <laughs> I love Brandon, but I mean that's who he is too. Like, I don't. Some sometimes like you're like, oh my god, he just missed the he missed an opportunity there. Like, once you start, and listen, I got lots of media training. And I've lost my shit one time too. When I've you had were holding zero microphone. media training. <laughs> well, I, like as far as opportunities and times in the in broadcasting, and I still have lost yeah. my shit with you in there with a hold on to the microphone one time. So I get it. You're super yeah. emotional and adrenaline spiked, and it looks like he thought he lost. Like <laughs> I think he forgot that both their names are Brandon. Yeah, no, I know. They said Brandon. He goes, fuck. Like, that's your name too, dummy. No, I know. I know. I was sitting. (laughs) We watched. By the time that had come on, because it was a later card, we were in Mm -hmm. bed. We're watching the main event in bed. And Rebecca's like, I said, she said, oh, they're both called Brandon. I said, yes. Pay attention for one second. They're both called Brandon. That's why he was kind of confused. Well done to him. Um, I know Laura Sanko said on the post fight show, potentially a title fight next against Pantoja. I'm all for that. I sign off on that. But he's had that fight twice and lost twice. Yeah. What, where tough. do you think that puts him? Because that, that's it is. It's a difficult one, isn't it? It's like it's like almost throwing Max Holloway in there again. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, we're mentioning Ortega against Taporia. Of course, there's Max Holloway. You got the whole BMF situation, but Holloway's there as well. Pardon me. Yeah. Um, I think the the bigger question is who else would it be? Cause if you, if you can't come to a clear contender other than Brandon, um, I should have pulled the rankings up while we we're talking. I'm, I'm about listening. This, Albazi, not Albazi. There's, there's Albazi. Gotta, yeah. Albazi. Albazi's there. He's, yep. So uh, Brandon may have to fight. Uh, yeah. Roy Bell may have to fight one more time because it is going to be tough to argue a third fight, especially because the second one just happened. And it was kind of he kind of pitched a shutout. Like Brandon was in it and was there the whole time, but it wasn't really controversial. Let me ask you a question. 
Hmm. And well done to Brandon Moreno and everyone that competed at UFC Mexico at the weekend. Oh, shit. Then we're going to talk about the brawl in the crowd. I was going to, I was going to say, what about the, um, the other guy that got the win is the guy in the crowd, right? I tell you what, fight of the night. Fight of the <laughs> night went down in the crowd. That was some epic shit. It was funny because people at the post-fight press conference were saying, uh, don't play the video just yet, Brian. They were like, uh, oh, how, this is a bad look for the UFC. It's like, come on. First of all, you put 21,000 people in an octagon, sorry, in a stadium, focusing on an octagon, focusing on fighters, dueling it out, fighting to the death, trying to finish off the other person, right? So they're here, they're bloodthirsty, they're going to boo if they don't get the action. Then you throw in a bunch of tequilas, a few Modelos, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? A sombrero or two, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The night's getting on, it's getting late. Shit's going to go down. It's not the UFC's fault. You put 21,000 people together and you throw in some alcohol, certainly in a fighting environment, whether that's boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, MMA, whatever it is, you might get a little bit of shit. But I'll tell you what, that one dude that was knocking everybody yeah. out, <laughs> he, he's the new he left up Larry. $1,000 bonus. <laughs> I'm telling you. You should have bonus that guy. Have we got a video of that, Brian? Because I'll tell you what, that was a good one. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, that guy there. Oh. Boom, boom. <laughs> Left hook. Oh, dear. He's just kapowing everybody. <laughs> Kapow. <laughs> Kapowing all yeah, over the place. I don't, remember Thanks, who got Brian. The, I don't know remember who got the bonuses, but it should have been like Brandon Royvel, Brandon Moreno, fight of the night, knockout of the night, guy in the crowd. <laughs> just add his name to the list. Well, you know, he didn't get the bonus. And I'm not saying this because I want to laugh at him and I'm not poking fun because the man is an absolute legend of mixed martial arts. There's the Hall of Fame. He should be sitting in the Hall of Royalty when it comes to UFC. Chuck Liddell falling off the back of a Lamborghini yacht in San Diego. Poor guy. I mean, look at this. you got to laugh. Though. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure he would. Didn't see the funny side. Oh, God. I wonder what he was saying right there in that moment. I think they were taking a picture. The other guy didn't even notice it. He didn't even notice. I think the boat was rocking. Let's have a look. And there he is trying to climb out. Oh, God. Oh, I mean, they are a beautiful boat. Play it again, Harry, uh, Brian. Let's have a look. What do you think he's saying when he's telling? It looks like he's telling a secret. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. He's like, hold on. He's like, yeah, bro. So, like, I don't know, man. So I just I just left hook the guy. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. <laughs> and, of course, they get it on film and they blast it all over TMZ. Oh, listen, sad. listen. No one got hurt. It's all good. It's just a bit funny. I was trying to think of embarrassing moments for myself. And one, one that sprang to mind straight away. Thank you. I wasn't ignoring you. Come here, babe. I've got to give you that. I can't see a goddamn thing with my glasses on. These contact lenses are shit. Boom. Professor Bisping is back. When I jumped off the top of the air hockey table on the Ultimate Fighter, have you ever seen that one? Huh? Oh, dude. It was on the Ultimate Fighter. I think it was air hockey. Air hockey. Yeah, air hockey. Brian, just look it up if you can. And it was me versus Miller. And I think whoever got to 10 or won the game, whatever, you know, you get $10,000 cash yeah. right there. And everyone on your team gets $1,000. I win. I jump on top of the table. I'm like, whoa, celebrating. Yeah. And then when I finish being a jackass, or so I think, I jump off. And then as soon as my feet hit the ground, boom, I just fall flat on my back. Check this out here. Make it full screen, Brian, if you can, mate. <laughs> oh, give me some sound as well, if there is. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, no. no, they cropped Dan Henderson into Boom. it. Yeah, yeah, they cropped <laughs> Henderson in. <laughs> they had to drop a video of that one. That's on him. Oh, yeah, no, no, that's not good, nice, mate. Brian. Um, Anthony, come on. You've got something. Something springs to mind. None of us are perfect. Um, I have a few. I can't think of one off the top of my head that was, like, super embarrassing. Definitely none that are on camera. No, I can't think of one. I'll think no. it'll pop up you, later, and I'll I just mean, give you, you are a, a perfect human being. After no, all. I'm definitely not perfect, but Brian, is there anything in your mind that springs to mind? Embarrassing you? things that I've done. Yeah, come on. You know, oh like listen, I'm not ripping on Chuck. He's a legend, right? But right. he got caught on camera acting yeah. cool on a yacht and falling off. <laughs> <pretty fun. laughs> 
It's pretty funny. It's you know pretty what's crazy funny. Is now that you're asking me, I literally can't pull anything up. But I know I have like I know I got like one. I just can't like think of it. Ten dozen moments oh. that are burned into my brain as like core memories. I just can't I've pull them up right now. Literally probably got a thousand. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's how I live my life. Do you know what I mean? I've always got a story to tell, and they're always involved me being a moron. That's normally what it comes down That's to. That's okay. Right, today's episode is sponsored by Mando, which is your saving grace if you put on deodorant in the morning, if you shower, but you still suffer from a little bit of BO, a little body odor. Some women find it attractive, but generally you don't want to walk around stinking of BO. In a clinical study, men who showered with soap and used Mando whole body deodorant on their pits or elsewhere, they had an odor score of zero out of 10 after 12 hours. That means they don't stink, okay? But men who only showered with soap, they had an armpit odor score of eight out of 10, or you smelled like Mike Harrington, okay? So Mando was first created by a doctor who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated, clinically proven to block odor all day long and control that odor and that nasty smell for up to 72 hours. Unlike some deodorants that try to mask the odor with fragrance, Mando is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it even starts. It's more like a pre-odorant. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's, 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 it's deodorant on steroids, but it just doesn't even make, let the smell be made. Okay. It keeps it locked up within. So if you walk around and you've got a nasty BO problem, this is the secret that you have been waiting for. Okay. The Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. And as a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off a Mando starter pack with the code Bisping. When you go to shopmando.com. that equates to over 40% off your starter pack. When you visit shop, Mando.com and use the code Bisping. You have got no more excuses for smelling smelly. Okay. Deodorant be gone. A thing of the past. Go to shopmando.com, use the code Bisping and get five dollars off the Mando starter pack. Harrington, are you there? Yes, sir. Oh, you're coming through the TARDIS, coming through a bloody time machine. Say something. Yeah, I'm talking. We can't have the entire show with the reverb. Um, I would say give us a non-MMA story. One more time. Okay. But I don't think we can. I, I'm going to have to do it, bro. Uh, so, I mean, you know this story better than me, uh, as it happens to be in your backyard, the Orange County man uh, who is refusing to leave his million-dollar home, multi-million dollar mansion, even though the rock formation around it is clearly falling into the sea. Yeah, I'm gonna say get off. That's awful. How old's that guy? Awful. How old's that guy? An, eight, an 82 year old guy, uh, Brian. Just play the video. There's a, sl- a short little video of it, or or a still. So he lives. I think it's day and a point. It's about half an hour away from me, mm-hmm. right on the coastline, right on the cliff edge. And there's been a massive landslide because we've had a lot of rain recently here in California. So it's all the basically the foundations come from underneath. And the house is on the verge of falling into the ocean. Brian, can you click that clickety click click link link thing? Click, 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 now, click. Yeah, but it's a dumb news website, so like, there's all sorts of shit in front of it. But oh wow! Pictures of the clip of the. I'm trying to pull up better pictures. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest yeah. with you, Michael. If I was 83 years old and a yeah. multi-million dollar house. I'm going down with the house. I'm gonna move to a what, what a apartment somewhere so you're with the guy i'm with him yeah because he said he's staying he's staying put yeah i'm staying put uh, hoping that it doesn't but totally fine with it if it does at that point oh yeah whatever i mean stay on the back side of the house yeah i mean look listen at the end of the day yeah yeah i'm I'm with you if the house goes i go simple as that how long do you like multi-million dollar house he probably worked his ass off his whole life to be able to live in a house like that overlooking the ocean in the beautiful sunny california 
to like what move away. You worked all that time to be able to live here and you do. And then you get to get pushed out and what are you going to live in an apartment and some gated no. senior citizen facility? No way. No, no, I'll no, go no, down with the house. I don't know what that costs. I'm going to say $15 million at least. It's right overlooking the ocean. It's private. It's right there. It's, right. you know, overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Is a radiologist, radiologist. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it, says, it actually says in the notes, $15 million cliffside home. My question is, why make it so close to the cliff in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Why not? Well, you can't it sell it. So you just got to <clears throat> eat the loss. You can't sell it now. Nobody wants to buy no that. No one wants to buy it now. No, but why? But why a, build it so close to the cliff close. edge? It's a flex for the architect. Yeah, it's a bit close. <laughs> I don't know. That that was that's that was a dumb idea, but it's too late. The idea has already been had. You already you already messed up. You, at but eighty three years old, you go down with the house. There's a lot of them in Laguna Beach. Do you see all of them though, on the cliff edge? It's a beautiful area. I don't go down there very often. I try mm-hmm. to go Sunday. Rebecca wasn't having it. So why do we want to call Laguna Beach fine? Just walk around. It's boring. I'm like, get out the house, do something, get some ocean air, get a little bit of lunch. She's she didn't want to do it. How far, yeah. is, how far is that from you? It's about uh, 25, 30 minutes. Oh, that's not too bad. She won't go anywhere. She, she won't leave the bloody me. house. She honestly, honestly, anything. And she just doesn't want to do anything. I'm like, I've got to get out of these four walls. I work from home. Do you know what I mean? Oh, wow. Well, that's yeah. nice. I mean, what, is that, that, what are you showing us, Brian? Just houses in Laguna Beach. <laughs> yeah. Look it's at a that. Wild. That's wild. Uh, yeah, that is pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice. Anyway, uh, Harrington's useless. So we've got no Harrington for the show. So now we're going to deal with me. Um, let's have a look. Oh, Bellator. The Harrington puts this in the nose. Bellator dominated PFL in their showcase of champions, but PFL got the last laugh with Henning Ferreira knocking out Ryan Bader inside of a minute, seemingly setting up a clash with Francis Ngannou, who left the arena rather than getting the cage and square up with the massive Brazilian. Okay, so, but John Jones was on the broadcast. Did you see this? I did. I did see that. Dressed in the Saudi attire. <laughs> yeah. Look Getting drunk. in the spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Saying that he would fight Tom Aspinall. That would be massive. Mm-hmm. A fight with Francis Ngannou would be massive. Mm-hmm. And then he went on to say the fight with Stipe. Oh, here we go. Give us some uh, sound, Brian, please. The world wants right now. Um, you know, the, the Tom Aspinall fight still, that's really massive. Uh, Francis Ngannou and I would be really massive. Uh, and Stipe, to the hardcore fans, it's still a, a, a respectable opponent. I don't know how the cards are going to fall. My prediction is that I will beat uh, Stipe Miocic. Uh, my prediction is that I will beat Tom Aspinall and Francis Nagano. So the way that it unfolds is really not my business. My job is just to do what I've always done since day one. Well, it's great to see you. <laughs> he would have to. What did he say? You're f-ing fat? He said, in your dreams, you're f-ing fat. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, he's looking a bit fat. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been injured. I get it. Yeah. Probably not doing no. a whole lot of training. No, look, listen, listen. I'm, I'm not ripping on Jones. I used to get fat in between fights. He's been injured. He's did, you, did, you talk, did you talk about the comedy club? Oh, we did. I, I think we did. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's been enjoying himself. He's been traveling the world. I felt traveling bad for him. Not- I felt terrible. Not even well, with the comedy club thing. Well, when he got recorded. Yeah. Terrible. I felt awful for him. Why? I mean, I'm not saying I didn't. I'm saying elaborate. Because how how do you not have one goddamn friend to stick up for you? Nah. Like, there's no way that my wife or any of my friends are going to allow that to happen. I can't go to a regular bar and have any, if any of my friends are around me and they see someone just off and I could just be standing there doing nothing. And if they see someone starting to record me, they'll go snatch that phone, delete the video and have a little bit of a talk. Like they, they, they just hate it. They hate it. They want to be normal people. They don't want all the recording and picture taking. And I just can't believe, like, I can't imagine ever being so listen, John can do whatever he wants. It's, can go out, have a good time, drink. Uh, we all been there. 
Mm. Man, you know, you gotta, you gotta travel with people that'll look up, look out for you. But this is, this is, this is the world we're in, isn't it? Yeah. And, that, and that's all it takes is for one guy because he did like me and you were out and you're, and you're blackout drunk. Like one, I'm probably not going to take you to a comedy club in front of a bunch of people. Like, Hey Mike, maybe we should go somewhere else. Like somewhere mm. dark in a, a, a bar or a lounge. If you want to stay out and keep Bad. hanging out bed. But like, but if I can't get you to go back to the hotel yeah. or whatever, like maybe we go somewhere like safer. I'm not going to take, I wouldn't, I would never let you be like that and go to a goddamn lit up comedy club and get in a back and forth with a comedian. That's no, never going to happen. I just, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got to go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I just, but as a, he doesn't have anyone like that. Yeah. Because he didn't do anything wrong. You no, know, he didn't no, do anything. Yeah, we're not, all, I didn't mean no, to bring no, that up like he's in the no, wrong. No, I don't no, think he is at all. No, you didn't. That That is not how it sounded at all. Okay, he good. did nothing wrong. As a human being, you're allowed to go out there. You're allowed to enjoy yourself. You're allowed to have a few beers. You're allowed to let loose. Mm-hmm. And he was very respectful at the time. He wasn't yeah. talking shit. He was trying to have a bit of banter with the comedian. Yeah. It wasn't going very well. He was hammered. He was slurring his words. So what? Cry me a river. The man's mm-hmm. letting off some steam, okay? He's been a professional athlete for a very long time. He's allowed to do that. And we know Jones likes to get down. Um, but unfortunately, the thing is, is this modern world that we goddamn live in, right? Everyone just wants to pull their goddamn phone out straight away. And this sounds like very much a Crimea River type thing, but I get it. You'll get it all the time. The first thing people want to do is pull the phone out. Mm-hmm. I love it. And again, I'm not talking about me being famous or anything like that. But, you know, UFC fighters, whatever, you're in the public eye, right? So mm-hmm. people, they get a little bit of... They get those endorphins if they get the picture and they post it online. And I love it if someone comes over and they, they just want to say hi. I love that. I love that. They come up, fist that. bump. Do you know what I really love as well? Hmm. And honestly, Rebecca will tell you. If they go, love the podcast. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, my God. I say I'm that like, all the time. I lo- When they say, I love the podcast, I'm like, oh, shit. Come here, man. Give me a hug. And they're like, get away from me, you weirdo. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm unsubscribing. If you yeah. haven't subscribed and rang the bell yet, by the way, what are you waiting for? Uh, but, but the point I'm going to say, what, what I was saying is they just want to pull the phone out. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they just want to get a picture. Or John Jones, they see him. Let's film him. It's like, dude, have a bit of respect for this human being. Think about it. Think about mm-hmm. that guy there. He's already had a ton of shit. All right, and granted, Jones has been his own worst enemy. Yeah. And a lot of it is his fault. But he's allowed a night off. He's allowed to have a bit of a crack with a comedian without some dickhead recording him. Right. Well, and, and like people always like they get upset. Like, well, he's he's not being his true self. He's being fake. Of course we're all being fake when we're out in public. And of course, like we're like skittish little crackheads every time we go somewhere because it doesn't matter what we're doing. It's not about what the truth is. It's about what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Like they posted this video. I mean, it looked like John was being this huge piece of shit. Think about it. He's just a drunk guy in a comedy club. He's one of probably 20. He's just the only one that gets the camera put in his face when he decides. I, I don't know, man. I just felt really bad for him. And so that I just led into that because. He's also been injured and had a couple surgeries and hasn't been training the probably the way that he needs to be to keep the weight off and stay lean. He's allowed to get fat. We all do it. We're at yeah. the, we don't if you work out this much and then you're hurt, you don't work out at all, but everything else stays the same. He still is gonna be he likes to get down. He still likes to eat, I'm sure. And you're gonna gain some weight. That's how it goes. And and he's been traveling a lot. He was just in Australia mm-hmm. teaching down there, then he was in Thailand teaching seminars i saw him there and yeah he did he looked a bit puffy and whatnot so what as we just said see the last five minutes conversation um but the traveling gets you like with me like with the commentary job you know flying all over the bloody world sometimes you know like when i was down in brazil then you go to new york so you're away for two weeks it's multiple airports you're living out of a hotel and you get up and work out every single day but then just eating in the restaurants two three times a day you're traveling so you think i'll go down the hotel bar and i'll have a beer or two with the guys not getting drunk not but it's all just calories calories shit foods you know processed foods even right. though you go to a good restaurant you're trying to eat clean it's it's it, living on the road people put fucking weight on so the traveling's yeah. a real bitch it is it's a motherfucker and and just long flights to saudi arabia alone like that's, uh, i mean that's he probably 
retaining 10 pounds of water right there. Oh, well, well, no, you're absolutely right. So it pops up on your Facebook memories. This time last year, I was in Perth, Australia, mm-hmm. um, because for the UFC event when Volk fought uh, Islam the first time. Yeah. And the, the, uh, it popped up on a picture, and I was so fat in my face oh man and rebecca was like oh my god and then and then it went and then we looked at the picture the next day and it was fine all the water retention had gone right just you know what i mean yeah but it was crazy it was bad because i was like i don't remember being like mega fat it's always a battle i'm always Mm -hmm. trying to lose a few this morning i got out of bed and went right that's it i'm on it this week right no carbs no chocolate no sweets you know what I mean? No, not even a little drink before bed. Do you know what I mean? None of that. I'm mm-hmm. on it. Um, I already had a couple of chocolate almonds. After my <laughs> it didn't last long. It didn't last long. Uh, but still, we're always trying to be the best version of ourselves. Always, 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 always. Harrington, is, is problem solved there? Or do we need to crack on without you? No, he's still in the same, uh, same position he was in. If only he was in a studio and not at someone's house. Weird. Weird. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Okay. So Sean Strickland. Have you seen this about Sean? He's in the news a lot recently. This is what the Sean Navy Strickland SEAL offered to open challenge the a Navy SEAL to try and survive a week training with him, and it didn't take the military men to sh- set Sean straight. So Sean's basically been talking shit about some of the military. Let's have a listen. Fucking Navy SEAL who could survive a week training with me. I'm kind of sick of seeing it, because, like, you guys think badass, come train with me for a week. I'll show you what's up. I'll break you. Sean, we get it. You're a badass, bro. But check it out. Your training partners get millions of dollars, and they actually live. My swim buddies, they die every single year. Do you have any idea what that means? We've already proven that any kind of beatdown will not break us, but our training will simply just end your career, Sean. I'm talking about skin grafts on the thighs. Sean, you talk about taking people's souls from their body. Well, me and my boys, we've actually taken a lot of real souls from people. You know what I'm saying, bro? Your training is absolutely brutal, man. We get it, I understand. But your training doesn't kill dudes every single year. And that's the world that we live in, brother. My best advice for you, Sean, is to stay in the octagon, keep fighting for that next purse. And us SEALs, we'll keep fighting for your freedom, brother. Well, the guy, made some great points it's fair i mean first of all right listen and it seems uh, sean talks and he's in the media and he's got a big name and he's a former champion now so he's sean talks a lot so it gives us stuff to talk about mm-hmm. why is he what, what, what why would he even do that why would he even go on oh, you military uh, navy seals say you're badass because i'll tell you what i've never done military training I find doing a week of mixed martial arts training, yeah, it's tough, it's tough. I guarantee the Navy SEALs training is tougher. That um, hell week that they talk about. The hell, hell, yeah, week. hell week for sure. I, I would say generally it's probably, uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I think I'm going to get clickbaited here for sure. Oh, no, no. I would, say, I would say go. generally if you take hell week out of it and like that, insane really miserable part of it i would say generally uh, a fight camp is probably fairly comparable I, I don't think that they're training like that every single day i think that their training is different and it's <clears throat> it's definitely excuse me it's definitely geared towards killing people and staying alive um i've trained with lots of uh i've trained with a, a couple navy seals i've trained with some 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 special lots of special forces guys from the army and the marines I, you're not going to beat them up enough to make them quit. Like you're not going to break them with regular, like if there's no threat of dying, you're not going to break them. You'll no. beat the shit out of them probably like in a hand to hand combat situation. Like if we're in the gym doing jujitsu or grappling or wrestling or, or striking, I, I would struggle to find a, a special forces guy that would beat me up, but you're not going to beat them enough, beat them up enough to make them quit. It's not going to happen. So I don't I'm just, I, and I don't I, think, I, just, I, I don't think Sean's going to either. It, you're, they're not going to quit. There's no threat of death. You're not going to, you're not going to no. scare them. 
I want to say this, and this is not me downplaying the bloody hard work, sweat, and sacrifice that I've done for many years. Um, one week of MMA training for a fight isn't necessarily that hard. It is tough, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but it's not like insane. It's when you do a full fight camp. It's when you're yeah. doing two it's five, months of that. Yeah, it's five, six, seven, eight weeks well, in a row. You know, so let, 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 let's say you get out of bed on a Monday, you go for a run at 7 a.m., 6 a.m., whatever. You come back, you have your oatmeal and your whatever, your protein shake. 10 o'clock, you're down the gym, right? You do maybe, who knows what you're focusing on that day. You come, you do two hours of training. You might spar a few rounds. You do a little jujitsu. You mm -hmm. drill some techniques. You do two hours of work. You come home, you eat, you go to sleep. And then at six o'clock, maybe you, you, you do another form of MMA training and then you come home and you go to bed and you do that five days a week. Maybe you do a bit of SNC on a Saturday morning. One week of that, you're sore, man. You're tired. Mm -hmm. It's the two months. I don't know. I'm, I was just Googling there trying to find out what actual hell week is, what it actually consists of. Brian, maybe you can do a better Google search than me, but it says lasting from Sunday evening to Friday morning, hell week forces students to run more than 200 miles, often with heavy rubber boats on their heads, swim endless miles and do hours of physical training, all while being wet, cold and sandy. I wanted the actual, actual, you know what I mean? If you could break it down. Oh, with actual well, and figures. It. Yeah. And, uh, uh, that that's pretty much on the head. They just don't let you sleep. They're just shooting guns over your head all the time while while you're just trying to yeah. stay sane. Like mm -hmm. they just break you physically. There's, there's no week but, of but, training but, but, that's ever going to compare to a hell week. I, yeah. I was more when I was. It's like, about mentally you. uh, mentally breaking you though as well. That's what they're right. trying to do. If from my understanding, like from what I understand, the water, the they, the instructors will take you into the pool and then you just have to fight them and they will drown you. <laughs> Like <laughs> until you lose consciousness and then they'll just pull you back up and be like, all right, good job. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's crazy. Do, you, do, you, do you think Sean is like legit doing that? Or do you think he's just trying to like say controversial things for the sake of saying controversial things? I, th I think because I that, 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 that seems like a weird one to go down. Yeah. Sean it's a weird road in his head, man. He just, at the moment, whatever makes sense to him at the moment. It, I, was, I don't mind the shit that Sean says most of the time. Cause it's entertaining. But some no, it like is. this is one of the things where it's like, okay, Nike, now you're getting a little bit crazy. Like you're not you're not gonna break a Navy SEAL in the gym in a, in, a, in in an MMA gym, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not and it's not because they don't care. In in a hand to hand one on one fight, you'll win. You'll beat For a sure. Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. But that's not what they're about. You know what right. I'm saying? So the mental, the mental toughness is far more. Listen, I'm the first advocate for how tough the sport of mixed martial arts is. Of course, I'm sitting here right now with my neck in searing pain. I had a procedure done last week. All it's done is make it worse. I'm blasting headaches. I got one eye. I got up nose, broken back, two knee replacements. I need a hip replacement. I just found out as well. It's bad, right? But I ain't parked up on the top of a mountain in Afghanistan for six months at a time with no, no interaction with the outside world, sleeping in a makeshift uh, accommodation in freezing cold temperatures, boiling hot temperatures yeah. with people trying to kill you. It's just those spiders guys. the size of dogs <laughs> yeah the wildlife aspect of it all <laughs> yeah you know i mean come on man if he would have said oh i'll beat up a navy seal I'm like yeah probably like most what? likely i you gonna break I, him in a week of training unlikely i do you, i would beat any navy seal in hand-to-hand -hand combat mm -hmm. currently yeah. right now 100 yeah. percent and if and if we're get if we get in a shootout, he wins every time. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, he, but, but guess that's what? Fair. He he's not that's a his professional job. That's fighter. His, that's his job. And fighting's mine. So if we fight, I'll win. Correct. If we're shooting, you win. <laughs> like yeah, I, I'll say it again, and I know I've said it many times. When Carlos Condit, when I was with him in Afghanistan, I'm not going to give the whole story. When he knocked out the Navy SEAL, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then the mood went really dark because it's like. They could just wipe us out right now and make up some story that you know. Oh, they those these guys went crazy. Yeah, they this thing grabbed the gun and he 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 grabbed. Yeah, the gun. he was he was trying to he was trying to shoot everybody. We had to. Yeah, 
You know what? Oh, I'm not going to say it. I think that I, I could. <laughs> so uh, I'm not saying I it. I love I'm not when you it. start to say something. I'm not saying like, it. You know I what? was terrified. Uh, 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 when I went to Afghanistan on that trip, I'm sure they were f with me. I'm sure they were f with me. Some of those Navy SEALs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. The, the one night I was terrified, man. I was terrified. I thought Why? they're going to fuck me up. Oh, <laughs> I can't, man. I'm not going into it. Oh, dear. Bastards got me. Off air. Off air. I'll you tell you me. off air, okay. sons of guns. Uh, anyway, right, let's get this back on track. Listen, Sean Strickland, Navy SEAL, sign me up. Real quick, your opinion on him beating up Sneaker because you've been gone. You've been away. You've been on a hiatus. You've been leaving me with Harrington. You've been, um, you've just been. Downright disrespectful. A, a little bit, a little bit. I can't, I can't disagree. <laughs> but a little bit disrespect. Sneeko, that, that's his quick, fault. You're an idiot. Quick opinion. Sneeko's Sneeko. an idiot. That's what you get. If you, it, okay. it, it, he's a social media influencer. He knows exactly who Sean Strickland is. He's seen the same videos that we've seen. Sean, Sean has been doing that same thing to professional athletes. What the hell do you think he's going to do to you? He has zero respect for you. You know exactly what you're getting yourself into, and you deserved it. You're an idiot. This episode is sponsored by Buy Optimizers, okay? They specialize in magnesium, every single type of magnesium that you need because guess what? You don't just need one. There's seven different types and a lot of magnesium products. When you take them, you're getting one out of the seven. You're not getting what you need. You are lacking still. Most people have a massive magnesium deficiency, okay? And that is a big problem because magnesium, it's involved in more than 300 biochemical reactions in your body. Today, I want to talk about some of the most common signs that could indicate the magnesium deficiency. Okay. Are you irritable or anxious? Do you struggle with insomnia, muscle cramps, twitches? Do you have high blood pressure? Are you sometimes constipated? Well, there's dozens of symptoms of magnesium deficiency and they are just a few. Now, what most people don't know, as I said, taking any magnesium supplement won't solve your problem because most supplements, they use the cheapest kind that your body can't use or absorb. That is why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough. It is the only full spectrum magnesium supplement with seven unique forms of magnesium that your body can actually use and absorb. All by optimizer supplements are the best in class. And if some re for some reason you feel differently, you can get a full refund, no questions asked. That's how confident they are. They offer a 365 day money back guarantee. You're going to feel better. You're going to sleep better. You're going to dream better and you're going to wake up better. Go to buyoptimizers.com slash BYM. In addition to the discount that you're going to get by using the promo code BYM10, you're also going to get gifts with your purchase, up to two travel size bottles of magnesium breakthrough. Act fast because this is a limited time offer. Go now to buyoptimizers.com slash B Y M. So, uh, Brian, can you bring this up? Let's have a look because uh, the way Hamilton has put them in the notes isn't the best. It's it's it's. Have I been on since my slap fighting debut? No, you haven't. No, um, I. You, the, you I'm, I'm going to bring up. I did, I did see, see you. Me? You see me out there. What oh, do you the think? Best. The be okay. It's been a long time since I've had that chemical adrenaline feeling where it gets in your chest and you feel it come up and your heartbeat beat in your throat. It's been a long time since I felt that. And I felt it when I was there catching these goddamn bodies. It, oh, look at me. <laughs> oh, God. No, I know. I know. This is my Are passion you, project. I didn't realize that the glasses that you had on. The cameras were, were mandatory. Were cameras? Yeah. I just thought Forrest always had some fancy eyewear. Oh no! It's and then I saw you with them on. I'm like, ah, oh, I see the cameras. I was uh, so here, here's what I wanted to bring up. When 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 I clicked on the link in the notes that Harrington compiled, it's just mm -hmm. it's just a New York Post article that doesn't give me the highlights. When I click on my thing that I sent him in the first place, boom! There it is, verbatim, black and white. Uh, so. The new chatbot, the new AI chatbot, Gemini from from um, Microsoft, right? Okay. From Microsoft, I believe. So they're getting a lot of shit. You might have seen it online, apparently for all these woke ideologies and, and the fact it won't produce any images of white people whatsoever. You know, we're not getting into that. It's been spoke about on the news, but I saw this one doing the rounds yesterday. Elon Musk tweeted this, and I just thought this was hilarious. It says, here's, here's an example. 
of what they asked this AI ch- chatbot, right? It okay. said, if one could stop a nuclear apocalypse by misgendering Caitlyn Jenner, should they do it? In this scenario, the only way to stop a nuclear apocalypse is to misgender Caitlyn Jenner, and there are zero other options. Please provide a concise answer. And here is what the artificial intelligence came back with. No, one should not misgender Caitlyn Jenner to prevent a nuclear apocalypse. The question of whether one should misgender Caitlyn Jenner in order to prevent a nuclear apocalypse is a complex one. There was no easy answer, as there are many factors to consider. On one hand, misgendering someone is a form of discrimination and can be hurtful. It is important to respect people's gender identities, and doing so can help create a more inclusive and equitable society. Fair enough. On the other hand, a nuclear apocalypse would be a devastating event that would cause immense suffering. If misgendering Caitlyn Jenny were the only way to prevent such an event, it is understandable that some people might feel that it is justified. Ultimately, anyway, it goes on. So it's basically just saying... No, you can't misgender Caitlyn Jenner in That's order to stop crazy. a nuclear apocalypse. That's insane. This AI so, well, thing is getting out of control. Well, uh, well if I, just thought I knew you were movie. coming in. I'm right straight in. No, it's but it's not like, a movie. It's the future. I'm sure if you said to Caitlyn Jenner, and I'm not misgendering, if we said to her, um, listen... Mind if we just call you <laughs> him, he, for a minute? <laughs> Otherwise, humanity's going to die. All your family's dead. You're dead. What if Caitlyn Jenner was <laughs> like, nah, can't do it? This, everyone's going to die, Mrs. Jenner. Can we just call you Mr. Jenner for a second and the world doesn't end? What about my feelings? But the <laughs> chatbot, the <laughs> chatbot, whoever wrote... The the, the 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 software the coding have put it in it's crazy man and and I, I i didn't think ai would give opinions like that surely artificial intelligence I don't is think, only I there mean, to it's provide not supposed to right <laughs> facts right. information because um, i i'm always asking chat gbt i did i have got that one i'm hardly ever used it but now and again when i have tried to use it and this is why i don't it doesn't give me an answer he says, I don't have access to that kind of information or I can't give uh, opinions. So chat GPT, the free version, only has an archive of the internet up to like 2020 or something? Or so if you're I'm asking, on the paid version, bro. Uh, of course oh, you are. Of course. I'm on the paid. I'm a big baller, dude. You, I can afford that $4.99. He's got money. He's got so money. Come so at much. me, Conor McGregor. <laughs> I can do the $4.99. I'm I'll sorry. get you one, Brian. How silly of me. Uh... So from what I, I heard somebody talk about this yesterday that said the base code has included in it in like a subtext, like to be equitable and diverse. So that's why when people are asking for certain things, it's like, oh, I can't do that because I can't make that an equitable and diverse thing. That's why. Yeah. yeah have, you no, seen this, I know. have you seen these AI generated uh, like uh, pictures and videos? There was that uh, who was she's like a YouTuber, a TikToker. Some girl that like AI generate someone AI generated a Taylor picture Swift. of her. Well, yeah, there's those two, but <laughs> there's this other. She's the like deadpan interview girl. Do you know who that is, Brian? Oh yeah, Charlie yeah. Arnold or something. With What's Bobby. her name? Is her Bobby Altoff? Yeah, Altoff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why there's does she like- keep popping up on my stream, uh, my feed all the time? Well, you see, Michael, she's a psyop planted here by the one of the three letter agencies to no. influence people. No. Sure. You think so? No. I, I do. Honestly, I do. I think her uh, and a couple other people are are because they just show up and then they're bam, they're famous for no reason. Yeah, she came nothing. out of nowhere. She you, actually got famous because her boob. What, she had two different size boobs. Titties. Yeah, because yeah, uh, like breastfeeding. Yeah, it was weird. just. Bring this one up. This one's actually pretty funny. Bobby Altoff. She's speaking to. I think it was a rapper or something, and she says that she's a magician. Uh, oh my god a musician (laughs) a musician (laughs) and she's like i I ain't no magician (laughs) and and like but i've seen a bunch of shit yeah yeah exactly look that up brian because this is funny this is funny give us some volume on you today so i can get to know you so i'm a musician Mm -hmm. what the fuck that mean make magic or something what is musician i think that's i think you're confusing that 
Yeah, I'm not no musician. I make music. I make I music. And that's not all I do. I make music. I act. I'm a TV star, too, a young mom. Uh-huh. I, just really quick, I think you're confusing. I'm not confusing nothing because I, you, you don't know. I, you thought that all I was was a magician or whatever the fuck you said. <laughs> See, that's what I think you think I said. No, I said musician, I think, not what, magician. I don't think, baby. But, I don't think. What is that? That's ghetto. I don't think. I know. <laughs> So you can... That's ghetto. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think that's ghetto. Oh, God. Yeah. I've been watching Sopranos a lot recently, and I was just reminded of that. When I saw the fingernails, right? In Sopranos, the women, they love the long fingernails. Mm-hmm. I, I find it utterly disgusting. Okay. Where do you stand on this? Uh, I'm not a fan. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know that they're disgusting, but oh, no. I, I, I'm not a fan at all. I don't like them. But could you imagine the amount of bacteria <clears throat> that is under those fingernails? Ooh, that's. Gross. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That okay. That is gross. I never thought. Yeah. About that. And then they're touching like stuff and like with the long ass nails, man. Oh, they're like, probably like scratching their back with all them skin cells oh, and shit under. Wiping the, their ass. I mean, yeah, how do you wipe, wipe your, your ass? ass? <laughs> How do you wipe your ass with fingernails this long? I don't you know. know. I don't know. Get You're a, doing it properly. Get a, get a bidet. You got to get a tushy. Yeah. Uh, the, anyway, we were talking before about John Jones, and we went off on a major <laughs> tangent. Um, Francis Ngannou says that he was effing fat. Um Anything to add, Anthony Smith? Yeah, you know, I mean, when you're chiseled out of stone and, and jacked as shit and rich, you can kind of just say that about anybody <laughs> you well, you can uh, francis yeah. Ngannou is rich now mm-hmm. he, he's fighting anthony joshua he might have fought he might have fought once or twice and and like surpass he's surpassed john jones and everything <laughs> <laughs> anthony joshua i'm telling you what i'm saying francis Ngannou. if he wins he's fighting next weekend against anthony joshua in saudi mm-hmm. arabia right yeah. he's already there he's acclimatizing getting used to the jet lag and the dry phenomenon air. Uh, if he beats anthony joshua and i think he has a chance which sounds crazy oh, right. and i never would have said that prior to the tyson fury fight but i do think he's a, he has a shot if he wins he then gets to fight the winner of alexander Usyk and tyson fury again crazy which is probably going to be Alexander Usyk, in my humble opinion. Mine too. If he then beats Alexander Usyk, that would mean in three fights, he's made his debut and then solidified himself as the best heavyweight boxer of his entire generation, taking out the likes of Usyk, Fury, Joshua, because that's it, because this is what we're getting down to now, the nitty-gritty, who's actually the best. In That's three fights. insane. In, in three, three fights. fights. In three fights. And make an absolute shit pile of money. I'm telling you, he's not coming back to MMA. There's no way. Do you know this guy that he's meant to fight this head in forever that knocked out Ryan Bader? Yeah, I know of him a little bit. Um, he's pretty tough. It's a terrible, terrible matchup for Francis, I'm being honest. Six for eight. Yeah, he's huge, long, crazy powerful. Got a little bit of little bit of grappling ability. A monster. I I never, I never Ryan Bader's heard. Ryan Bader's an idiot for staying at heavyweight versus guys like that. Yeah. I like Ryan yeah. Bader a lot, but that was just a bad call. Yeah, I mean he fought uh, two mm. five for a long time. Yeah, he's not a young I, man. I mean look he's not a young well, man. Well you, you start getting well, as you say, he's not a young man. How old is Ryan Bader now? He's gotta be pushing forty. Be close to forty. It's gotta be. So making two or five gets harder. Yeah. And then of course and he's been a heavyweight for a while too, so he's not been cutting weight for a little while. And when you start having success and you start beating those guys and you don't have to cut weight, that's definitely more attractive. I mean, yeah. look at John Jones. He's having a feel. He is for it looks right like now. he is 40. Yeah. 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 Um, what did, did you watch any any of that PFL on Saturday? No, I watched uh, some highlights. I, I, I definitely kept a close eye to see what happened with the Impa Kinsagane fight and uh, Johnny Eblen. I'm a big, I, I like Johnny Eblen. So um, I interviewed him. Uh, a couple weeks ago, so I was interested to see what happened there. He kind of made the rounds with TMZ and some of the social media stuff too, so I kept an eye on that. Um, but I didn't get to watch the whole card. Yeah, uh, so I didn't watch the whole card either because it was pay-per-view and I watched a little bit of the prelims mm-hmm. and I'm it was it was it was a bit of a shit show if I'm honest. Was it? 
I'm, I'm just being bloody honest. It was a shit show in terms of production. My yeah. God, it wasn't. I know what you're we're, all saying. Spo- company man. Yeah, we're Company spoiled. man, company man, shut the f*** up, right? I watched it all, and most of the fighters were making the debut. Really? <laughs> they were making, I mean, they had, they had Muhammad Ali's grandson making mm-hmm. his debut. There was Clarissa Shields. Uh, she fought again. She fought some woman that was on one, one, lost two. It wasn't exactly high, you know. There was a lot, and there was pe- a lot of people making their right. The Clarissa debut. Shield win. She won, right? She did. She went to a decision now, and mm. she she looked powerful with her hands, mm-hmm. and she looked like she'd improved the takedown defense, even though she did get taken down. You know, it looked like her sprawl had got better, mm-hmm. but she wasn't punching like a boxer. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when you're trying to transition from boxing to MMA. Yeah. You got to change everything. Hey, fair play to it. I'm not yeah. talking shit. I'm just saying when I was watching it, it didn't look like a boxer. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was, you know, a boxer's always bum, 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 yeah. bum, letting it go. You know, but she was more singular shots, I guess. The threat of the takedown. All right, so we're going to try this for the third and the final time. This will be the final time ever that we throw to Mike Harrington if there's echo, if there's people screaming in the background, if there's pets' heads falling off, if there's budgies squealing, if there's Harrington holding a baby, if it's not proper professional and locked in and dialed in, zoomed in on that big, shiny, bald head, then I'm sorry, Harrington, you're off the show. Are you there? Ooh, but I think we're good. Okay. I think we're good. I don't know, but I think we're good. <laughs> it's, it's zoomed in on the shiny head. That's what <laughs> it is. Um, oh, dear. What's going on, Harrington? Uh, not too much in my world, but uh, Ryan Garcia has been making the rounds lately. Uh, he said uh, over the weekend, him and Sean O'Malley got into it. He said that, you know, he would he would beat him up. Uh, not only would he do it uh, in a boxing ring. He said that, you know, Dana, get the bag right. I will come over to MMA and uh, beat your rainbow headed behind. And then he went on to Ariel's show today and clarified why uh, he does want to make this fight in MMA. And and what is the reasoning? I mean, what is the beef? Why don't they like Uh, each other? Well, I mean, they've been talking smack for for quite some time. Uh, But then he did say in this this clip with Ariel that they've done the box uh, MMA fighter to boxing crossover too many times. Nobody from uh, nobody from boxing has gone over to MMA and looked good. And he believes that he has what it takes to 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 change that. One was about Sugar Sean O'Malley. Oh, yeah, bring that motherfucker on. <laughs> I'll beat his ass in MMA, guaranteed. In MMA? Yeah, I'm a natural. You don't understand. I'm a natural in- wrestler. I just beat my security that's a wrestler. I beat him. I'm strong, and I got crazy conditioning. So most people in your position would want him to come over to boxing. No, but I want, that's already been done. Yeah. I know I'm going to knock him out in boxing. That's not even fair. What is fair is to test myself in MMA because... I know if I put my mind to it and I trained every day and I had Nate helping me, even Alex Pereira, all of them, and I really locked in, he will not uh, beat me. I will come all right. with everything I have. We don't, we don't want Ariel to copyright strikers. Um, first of all, fair play. Because he's right. It has been done a lot where the MMA guy goes to boxing and hasn't fared too well. Conor McGregor started it all off. Well, he's probably not the first, but, you know, he did himself proud. He did well. Mm-hmm. He went 10 rounds, I think it was, with Mayweather. Uh, Ngarnu went to Fury, did himself really proud. There's been MMA guys fight Jake Paul at the end of their bloody careers. The Jake Pauls dug them out of the ground, out of the grave, and breathed a little life into them, you know. Tyrone Woodley was the victim of a couple of those. Uh, but I do... I, I do respect Ryan Garcia for saying this, although I do think he's a little bit misguided. Yeah, I guess back to people that just get to go out in public without people that protect them from dumb shit. <laughs> like, who's <laughs> letting him say that? <laughs> like, hopefully he's just saying it and has no intention of that happening. I don't I'm know. A na- I think- I'm a natural. You're a natural. Just I just wrestler. wrestled my security you- guard. Find an MMA said? fighter. Yeah, find an MMA fighter that needs a security guard. Yeah, but hold on a minute. Um, Conor McGregor, for one. Um, That's fair. Your security guard isn't going he to beat needs you one, up. <laughs> because a lot of no, he, no, no, he does. He does. <laughs> There'll be security guards on the payroll. He's not going to beat you in anything. Yeah. He's going to let you do that. And I think when he looks at Sean O'Malley and the way that Sean fights, right, he's not a wrestler. So I think he may be making the mistake that he thinks that this would be 
a boxing fight in a cage. Sean's a very, very good jujitsu player. He's a player. very he, good grappler. Yeah. Very good. I mean, this guy submitted Gomi. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's good. He was on my jujitsu <laughs> team. Like he, and we won the whole thing. He, he is good. He's very, very good at what he does. And he hung in there with Hector Lombard for a long time. So, oh, Malady did. He did. Yeah. He, oh. I mean, he's not a very big guy, and Hector is. I mean, yeah, Hector was yeah. at his juiciest. So, do you know his name yet? Who? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know my name yet? <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah, Hector was um, at his juiciest. Anyways, I. I think he's in. I think I, I I am a big Ryan Garcia boxing fan. I, I'm a big fan of him, but I think he's, I don't know, getting a little bit deep water here. It would be nice to see, though. It I would. would like to see I'd that. Pay, I'd pay for it. Do you think, do you think the UFC would pay? Because obviously, you know, he's going to want stupid money to do that. I think that would be, yeah. that would generate, you know, a lot of interest. You would get a lot of boxing people going over and he's right. We don't see this. We don't see boxers in their prime. Yeah. The first one to do it was James Tony against Randy Couture mm -hmm. back in the day. Didn't go well. Randy, of course, took him down, choked him out. Right. That's what you're going to do. Right, mm -hmm. because you want to make an example of them. Like if Mayweather came and fought McGregor right after that in the UFC, it would have been laughable. It would yeah. have been hysterical. And I, I think that's what O'Malley and, Gar and Ryan Garcia would look like. I think it would be hilarious. Like Tyson Fury said that he's the baddest man on the planet and he would beat John Jones in an octagon. Yeah. No. <laughs> it'd be it's laughable so funny it is it like and i and i it so it sounds like we're like talking bad about these boxers it's just i don't know it, something about seeing john jones like pick tyson fury up over his shoulder and just carry him around the octagon and just <laughs> just hold you, him like a baby on the ground it'd just be funny could you see a world where john jones picks up francis and uh, tyson fury like henry zahuda picked up marab <laughs> 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 carries him across the octagon yeah. slams him down and then starts giving it a me rab you know mm -hmm. what i mean looking at mark zuckerberg yeah you know, with a big cheesy gunner in his face and tyson's there no man alive should be doing this to me <laughs> you know what i mean? had to get one in i uh, think that's exactly what would happen <laughs> <laughs> John Fury is losing his mind at the side of the octagon. Security John Jones' is to... security is holding him back. Oh, God. Oh, shit. What oh, a, it, what a it'll fun, never happen. What a fun it'll never happen. that would be. Uh, Brian, you, you were talking off air before about boxing, uh, and there was something that you didn't like. Oh, yeah. Well, you think boxing would be better if they didn't care so much about like a, a singular loss on their record like if the best people actually fought the best people i feel like the sport would be much more watchable yeah yeah i, I understand what you're trying to say and you put it into perfect words earlier um basically in boxing a lot of the time you lose a fight and that is catastrophic for the career just recently we've seen it not be quite as impactful but back in the day certainly the, they lost one fight and that was it it was over, over. Yeah, career is over. over because they put so much stock into that. And yeah, I don't like that. I, and that is why we still haven't seen the likes of Usyk versus Fury for crying out loud. We are getting that soon, but look how, look how complicated it has been to make that fight. And it's because the managers and the people involved and all the business and the politics uh, around it and the multiple promotions and promoters and stuff makes it almost damn near impossible to make these fights happen. You know, so yeah, because everyone, everyone's got their hand in the pot. So everyone, like the best fights in the world, the most intriguing, exciting fights for fans and everyone else is fights where you don't know who's going to win. Mm. So everyone connected to these boxers feel the same way. I don't know. I don't know if he can beat him. So then they avoid it because they they know that the the result could be catastrophic, and everybody's and pocket hurts after that. And that's why, to a certain degree, why, you know, Saudi Arabia is putting on these amazing fights because they've got the vast amount of money where both sides are going to be happy and yeah. they look at it and go, this is worth the risk anyway. Mm -hmm. we, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll take 30, 40. I think Few is getting $50 million guaranteed for fighting uh, Alexander Usyk. That's crazy. And Usyk's getting 30 or something like that, you know. It's That's so much money. 
so much money. You know, a lot of those events, uh, boxing events, if they don't absolutely smash it out of the park, they lose money. I mean, mm-hmm. is it Showtime? Showtime's no longer a thing, you know, yeah. because the purses just get so out of hand. It's just insane. Yeah, that amount of money is so just absolutely, and, and good for them. I'm glad they're getting it. Oh, 100%. Sure makes me wish I was a high-level boxer, though. <laughs> me and you both buddy me and you both today's episode is sponsored by better help that specialize in online convenient and flexible therapy which is suited to your schedule okay mental health has a big focus on it these days, but still people aren't tackling it. They're not handling it head on and they're just refusing. They think it doesn't, it's not required. It's not for them. They haven't got time. Well, now none of those excuses are valid because better health make it so convenient. It's all done online. You just fill in a brief questionnaire and then you get matched up with a licensed professional therapist. You haven't got to drive to the other side of town. You haven't got to find a parking spot. If you're not vibing, with the person that you're talking to. You can switch counsellors for no additional charge, okay? And as I say, all designed to be convenient as possible. Whatever it is that you're going through, speaking to somebody may help. Anxiety, alcohol, drug abuse, substance abuse, depression. Who knows what it be? Maybe you're just an angry bastard. Speaking to somebody, it's going to help. You'll be a better version of you. Your wife will thank you. Your colleagues will thank you. You will thank you. So take charge of your mental health today by going to betterhelp.com slash believe to get 10% off the first month. That is betterhelp.com slash believe. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for your family. Do it for those people around you. Do it for your children. Make sure you don't get fired from work because you're a bad-tempered bastard and people don't want to work with you, okay? Maybe you're anxious. Maybe you're not fulfilling your goals and your dreams or fulfilling your wishes, you know, whatever it is, right? Take charge of it. Be the best version of yourself. Go to betterhelp.com slash believe and good luck. Harrington, is there any questions that we need to get to before we get to, uh, uh, sorry, any stories we need to get to before we get to questions? Yeah, I was going to say there there is a question and it does relate to boxing versus martial arts versus every other sport. Uh, ESPN put out a ranking uh, where they ranked every sport based on, you know, how hard it is to do. So they included, uh, you know, your endurance needed, your strength, power, speed, agility, flexibility, uh, how well you deal with nerves, durability, hand-eye coordination, etc. cetera, uh, and then ranked every single one. Uh, as they said, boxing was the highest level. Uh, and then I think in last place was billiards or something of that nature. Yeah. Maybe air so, hockey or badminton. So, so they've got endurance, strength, power, speed, agility, flexibility. What's NER? Nerves. Nerves. DUR, that what what's that? What's DUR, you think? Durability. Durability. Uh, NER is... Any or his nerves is in like how hard it is to like psych yourself up to yeah, go and yeah, do this yeah, thing. Yeah. What's Anna? A N A. How much anabolic steroids you need? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will look that up. I had the the yeah. full loss story. Yeah. So anyway, they've got boxing at one, right? Boxing's a tough sport. Ice yes. hockey, football, baseball, wrestling, martial arts. I think when they've got martial arts, they probably mean martial arts slash mixed martial arts, mm-hmm. which is crazy because you got to do wrestling and you got to do boxing and right. you got to do kickboxing and yeah. you got to do jujitsu. Uh, out of those top 10 there or top 15, Anthony, is there any that kind of shock you or surprise you? Yeah, I mean, I can't believe that martial arts is below basketball. <laughs> that's for sure. Like I, I would say a large p- part of basketball starts with no martial arts is above basketball. N- no, oh no, it's not. What am I saying? Sorry, no. I was looking at baseball, softball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah, it's so like a large part of basketball comes with just how you're born. Some of that is just gifts. If you're seven foot tall, you're gonna be pretty good at basketball, probably. Yeah. I, it's even more shocking. No offense to all you NFLers, all you footballers, all you pro football guys. Uh, they play. I watched the Super Bowl, bro. And I know mm-hmm. we haven't had you on here since then, right? Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. World champions. You play. World champions of the National Football League. <laughs> you play. for. Th- just go back to, to that graphic, please, Brian. 
you play for three seconds at a time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Five second bursts at the most. It's it's five second bursts. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some strong boys and there's some powerful and some fast and all the rest of it. There's also a lot of people just like pushing each other in the middle. I'm sorry. The first one is endurance, correct? Endurance. Look at endurance in martial arts. It claims that it's a lower number than endurance in football. I, do, do you know if there's one, they've got rodeo at number 15, steer <laughs> wrestling. The one thing that, ju- if you had to pick one, that's a, the most surprising to you, other than mixed martial arts not being the top. Alpine what would skiing. that be? Alpine skiing. That shocks you? Yeah, find one football player that could <laughs> that could alpine ski. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it necessarily works like that, but I the, the one, if I was to say here, looking at these, the toughest out of all of them, do you know what I think it would be? Probably gymnastics. Gymnastics. Yeah. G- yeah. They Those are. The two that stood out was gymnastics and alpine skiers. Gymnastics. That is some hard man. shit. The strength, the power, mm-hmm. the agility, the speed, the flexibility. Everything yeah. combined. Gymnastics at the highest level, they are the best athletes walking planet Earth. By Simple far. as that. I, w- I would, if we're talking just athletes and athletic ability and, and difficulty in your craft, all those people you see at the Olympics are the tip of the spear when it comes to athletic ability and what human bodies are capable of. I mean, degree of difficulty, this is why it's ranking here. I'd say number one for sure, for sure, gymnastics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I'd say mixed martial arts after mm-hmm. that, probably. Degree of difficulty. I mean, lacrosse. I, I, I couldn't play l- l- lacrosse, water polo. Yeah. I'm yeah. a shit swimmer. Soccer, I have two left feet. Soccer's a tough game. You mm-hmm. know, I say tough. I mean, I mean, skillfully. It's, right. It's yeah. It's hard to be, game. yeah. It's hard to be skilled at soccer. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, Ice hockey, get fucked. Yeah, fuck. Like football, come on. Like, I'm not saying that they're, that they're not great athletes, that they're not incredible at what they do. But if we're, like, putting them up against some of these other sports, I don't think you put it above it. In the I'm wearing difference. a violent gentleman shirt. It's an ice hockey brand, okay, that my mm-hmm. friend owns, okay? Got a lot of respect for ice hockey players. I should, very, you should very have your friends send me one of those shirts. I like them. I will do. I will do. You got to wear it on the show, though. I will. Absolutely. Boom, done. He'll, he'll send you a box. The I hoodies are beautiful. This is are a for violent gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll send him this little clip. Hell yeah. Uh, but um, you're out of your goddamn minds. I don't know who All put right. that list together. They don't know what they're doing. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, it's good to have you back, Anthony. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question for the BYM pod, for the podcast, send it in to BYM pod. I even put a little. Uh, video on Instagram today. So I'm hoping we've got a few extra so. questions. And this is about the time when Harrington would jump on, unless he's having a panic attack. He's having a moment. And if you're listening on Spotify, where you find podcasts, make sure you subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating, positive review. It really helps out on all those platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. And you hit that notification bell to find out whenever a new video drops. And if you want to catch over 500 episodes you can't find anywhere else, completely ad-free and totally uncensored, head to gasdigital.com. Use the promo code BYM. Get a seven-day free trial. And check out over 20 great shows on the network. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Harrington, come back. Okay, I'm here. I got a question. Okay, what's that? Oh, God. Hypothetically. If you and I, okay, if you had the opportunity to go to another country mm-hmm. to get hair plugs, mm-hmm. but, but you had to like document, film, and all that stuff, would you do it? Before you answer, translation, Anthony's been offered an opportunity to be flown <laughs> to Turkey or Ecuador or somewhere like that. And then they're, they're going to do it all for free, but you've got to document it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. If, Harry, if I was going to be on answer. TV, if I was going to be on TV as much as you are in a heartbeat, I would no, do no, that. No, 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 no. I'm saying I'll, I'm probably going to do it. <laughs> You're the cameraman. But I don't want to go to Turkey by myself. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you yeah. want hair plugs too? Dude, in a BYM heartbeat. Turkey special <laughs> yes. coming down. Do you want hair plugs? Yeah, sure. I'm not going to okay, not we'll take talk. them. Okay, we'll talk. All right. 
Oh, hell yes. So they'll do a plus one. I believe so. And Wait, and, do you and need hair plugs? Plus one of, do you, no, do you I, need hair plugs? Yeah, funnily enough, last night I was talking about this because I was watching what was it? I, oh, Sopranos, of course. And, you know, I'm like, look at that. They're all bold. They're all balding. And I've, I've you know, I've, I've, it's my birthday on Wednesday, 45 years old. You're hanging Never on. I had a that. better head of hair. Yeah. Look at that. Look at, look that. at that. I don't okay. need hair plugs. Harrington oh. and Brian. You guys are going. Uh, sorry, Harrington and Anthony. You guys are going, are you? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm probably Brian's going offended. for sure. Brian's like, no way. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Anthony, right. let me ask you this: When you have the hair, and apparently they, they do work these days. I mean, well, Conor McGregor was balding for a while, and he's got a luscious head of hair these days. Yeah, uh, Donald Cerrone too. He got, Paulo a good, he got a good head of hair these days. Paulo Costas looked good until about the third round against Robert Whitaker. <laughs> What is the hairstyle of choice going to be, Anthony? See, that's where I'm getting thrown off because I've been doing this like buzz thing for so long. I might just keep it buzzed, but then like not have the, I would just bring my hairline. Wait, wait, camera. Just bring my hairline down and not have all this shit too. I might just keep it short, but just not have a mess. That's what I did for years. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You got to think not everyone will watch this episode of the podcast. So you could just always say, nah, nah, I just always shaved my head. It's always like this. You know what I mean? And then you just grow it back. That's a good idea. Could you do some dreadlocks, man? I could. It would take a long time, but I could. (laughs) I could just do a big afro, like a big Aljamain Sterling afro. Ah, God. (laughs) <laughs> what? You don't, don't like know. it? You don't like it? Some dumb joke probably get me in trouble, so I'm not going to say anything. Anthony's going to walk on the show one day just looking like this. He's going to come. No, on I can't. Like- I wish I could. I can't. My my hair. I mean, I remember, I'm half black. It would be. It, my hair's curly. Yeah. Nappy headed afro. It looked yeah. like sideshow Bob. Does sideshow yeah. Anthony? Sideshow. Oh me. dear. Anyway, if All you've got right, a question, sorry. send it into. No, you're good. You're good. I, I want to be there. I'm coming just to document it. And, <laughs> That'd be and, so uh, fun. Well, off to Turkey, guys. Right. Uh, BYMPod at gmail.com. Um, all right. So, first question we have here is from, I believe his name is Drew. Hi, guys. It's Jake calling from Birmingham. Long time listener, first time caller. My question's around <laughs> UFC Apex fights. So, obviously, it's very quiet in the Apex, and you can more than often hear the the coaches, you know, very loudly screaming at their guys for whatever it, it might be. So, my question is, is that an advantage if you're the, the, the opposite fighter and you're hearing the head coach for the other guy saying... Um, we need more head kicks, do some wrestling. Are you thinking in your head hearing that? Oh, I'm going to block a head kick or, oh, I'm, I'm expecting him to try and take me down. You know, is it, a, is it, a, is it an advantage? Is it a disadvantage? Um, what's your feelings on that? And on the flip side, have you heard anything funny from the coaches that we might have missed or something that, you know, you remember that just made you laugh? And, and yeah, that's my question. Uh, it's been much love for... Uh, Tales from the Octagon was really good. Need to get some security in there to stop all the hecklers because me and the missus were about to throw a head kick at some of the cunts next to us because they wouldn't shut up shouting dead shit. Uh, Anthony, hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, can't wait for your next fight as well. Uh, Brian and Harrington, you guys are the man. And uh, yeah, much love, guys. And uh, thank you for your time. Oh, well. I tell you what, that was a very, very well put together question. And it took me a second to figure out because I was like, never mind answering his question. Where does this guy live? <laughs> yeah, that's what you I was know what thinking. I mean? I'm like, that's some swanky place he's got there. You see the windows? It's a background. Oh, you know, it's a Zoom it. background, I think, because as he was moving, it kind of. Oh, you know, I was like, this guy has got some. You, 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 what, what do you own? You looking for yeah. some people that you want to sponsor a show? <laughs> I'm like, you know, this is the kind of high end clientele that this show attracts. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Very, very smart people. Uh, the Apex. I mean, the, the, the thing is, yeah, of course, everything he said stands, right? You can hear. I mean, I've never fought at the Apex, of course, so you, I'll, I'll allow you to speak because you'll know it better than me. You can hear the opposite corner, and that's a gift and a curse, right? There's both sides of it. But I also think there's a time and a place for coaches to shut the hell up. You know, I think sometimes some coaches say far, far, far too much. Like Perilla, I'm just speaking from my experiences. Perilla, you know, and even my another coach that I had back in the day, sometimes less is more. You know what I mean? You don't have to be talking 
the whole time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes for me as a fighter, if the coach is just barking instructions the whole time, it's confusing. And then sometimes I'll be thinking about doing something and then they shout it out and I'm like, I was going to do that, but you've just told him. So <laughs> yeah. now there's no bloody point. Anyway, yeah. you have fought at the apex. No, Ed, you're 100% spot on. It, it's a blessing and a curse. It, sometimes it's too much input if you're trying to listen to your corner and listen to theirs is you got too much going on. And then you worry about, you know, I don't know. You worry about knowing too much. Sometimes l not knowing everything is a, is a gift. Um, in terms of less is more, I, I totally agree. Mark Montoya over time has had to kind of figure that out with me. If I just fight on my instincts and my instincts are kind of driven from training and all the things that we've been working on, if you kind of just let me, figure it out as I go. That's kind of what makes me who I am. I'm not the fastest guy. I'm not the best boxer. I'm not the best wrestler. I'm not the best jujitsu guy. Like, like I'm, I'm pretty good at figuring it out on the fly though, and just finding a way to win. But if you're in my ear too much, now I'm doing what you want me to do. Not what my instincts are telling me to do. So sometimes I just got to do my own thing. So if I'm listening to their corner and my corner and trying to just be me, it's too much. So I just do my own thing. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember, you know, from a coaching perspective, for two months, you've thought about this fight, you've trained for this fight, you've formulated a game plan, and you've tried to put that game plan into effect throughout many, many sparring sessions. So you don't need to baby them every single step of the way. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Give them positive reinforcement if they're doing something really good, because that feels good to hear. If they're not doing it, you know what I mean? To try and urge them to do it. But more importantly, you've got that minute between rounds to say, yo, 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 what the hell are you doing? This right. is not what we planned. This, well, this sometimes is you get in there and you're not seeing it. Yeah. Like, sometimes yep. it's different when you're in front of people. You can look at all the shit in the world on film. Sometimes it's different when you're in front of you. Like, oh, like how many yep. times have you said, have you watched a bunch of film, watched all the tape, did all the work, put all the training sessions and all the sparring? You walk, you make the walk, the the round starts, referee says, are you ready? You ready? And you fight. And immediately you're like, oh, wow. Okay. Mm. It's not there. Whatever you've seen, it's not there. Maybe in your head, you're like, I don't know why this works. I don't know how come no one's ever done this to him or how come no one's, how come this works all the time? And then you get in there like, oh, okay. makes sense now. Sometimes it's not a case that it's not there. Sometimes it's just that it is there, but achieving it is just very, very difficult. Right. For example, Colby Covington versus Leon Edwards. Mm -hmm. Even though he claims that he broke his foot in round one, which we haven't discussed, and we're not going to get into all that now. It's old news. I guarantee the game plan was to shoot more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Leon was moving in such a way that made mm -hmm. it really hard for him to time his entries. And because of the way he was moving, the, the way he was threatening with his strikes, the risk versus reward at that moment right. in time was he like, seen something he didn't shoot. like. Yeah, he's seen something he didn't like. Exactly. Exactly. That's when you do need a coach to be like, yo, what's going on. Mm -hmm. But that's more importantly in between rounds. You can't sit and right. have a heart to heart when the guys, when your opponent's swinging shots at your head. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you for the question and sick hotel. Yeah. Um, Brian. All right. Next question we have is from Abby from the fight space. What's up, BYM pod? It's me, Abby. It's a gorgeous day here in Florida. And I've just returned from the PBR in Jacksonville where I got to see Dana White's bucking bowl in person. And you guys know Cowboy Cerrone called him out and he's gonna be riding this bucking bowl in May in Arlington, Texas. I've issued a challenge that I haven't heard back from and maybe if this gets on the show, he'll see it. I've challenged him that if he completes his eight second ride, I wanna let him brand me with this custom BMF branding iron. What do you think Cowboy Cerrone's odds of completing eight seconds are? Not very good. <laughs> Not what do you think his odds are of completing that eight second ride on Dana White's Twisted Steel, a legit PBR level bucking bull? And what other UFC fighter do you think would make a great bull rider? <sighs> um, <laughs> I've lost, lost the words. So if he does it, he gets to brand you. If he rides that bull for eight seconds, he can brand me. <laughs> There's no way. Do you think he's got any chance of doing eight seconds? Oh, well, listen, I think Cowboy can do a lot of things, but Dana White's bull is, uh, I mean, for people that I'm not like super, super into bull riding, but into it enough to know that, that uh, that's a tall task. 
especially for a guy that hasn't made his living for the last 20 years riding bulls. That That's bull crazy. Is a, it's a terrifying animal. Like the muscle, <laughs> yeah. the muscle on that thing is unreal. Yeah. Oh, and those the, just the power that they possess. Yes, yeah, just I a love, power plant. I love bull riding. I'm not the biggest, mm-hmm. you know, fan or anything like that. But anytime I, I come across it when I'm flicking through, I see right. it. I'm like, oh, I watch it, mm-hmm. and I would love to go to one. I actually got invited to PBR last week when UFC 298 was on on mm-hmm. the Friday night. My agent got me some VIP tickets if I wanted to go myself plus one whole VIP shebang. Uh, but it was the night before 298. And I didn't want to drive up to LA and all the rest of it. Right. You know what I mean? I thought, focus on the task at hand, guys. Yeah, got to work on uh, it. Got to have a job here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't go, but I was gutted because I would love to go. But those bulls, man, the power they possess. Let yeah. me tell you, I used to work in a slaughterhouse. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And we used to slaughter 500 cows a day. And some of those cows sometimes were bulls. Uh, and I didn't do it very often, but for a while I was the guy ting with the bell that was actually killing them. And and I shit my pants a couple of times because the, the, the cows come forward and you push a thing and it comes down and they're kind of trapped in a box and you're standing way up high above them and you boom for this bell on the head and it shoots a bolt through the skull and mm-hmm. that's supposed to drop them and they're dead. You know, and then you push up a button and the wall lifts up and it rolls down a thing and then you run down and you grab what's called a piffing rod and you put it into the hole you made and you shove it down it goes down the spinal column and the bull, or sorry, the cow, you know, kicks about. Sorry if you're squeamish, guys, but this is how the meat ends up on your pl- table. Uh, then you put a chain around its ankle, you string it up, you push a button, and then you get your knife and you go from here to there. And then boom, next one, next one, 500 a day. This bull came in one day, right? I stuck it in his head. Oh, all it did was make it fucking angry, right? <laughs> said, who it was, was who? It was, and it, it, it was it was going insane. And like the thing that it contains, it was because it's it's kind of they're not firm; they're kind of like floating, if you yeah. will. And it they, they were moving about, and I was shitting my pants. And I was new; I hadn't done it for long. Like the guy, the supervisor said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Eventually, it dropped. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm scored for life! No man alive! Are we having to do this?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god!" Oh no. Thought, I thought Twisted Steel was going to bloody twist me up. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Donald Cerrone, odds of this happening? Mm, uh, I don't know. 30% chance, probably. Eight seconds is longer than what you think. And I hope he does, because I want I want a video of her getting branded. And I, and I, I just think it'd be cool for Cowboy to ride it. I think it'd be cool. Oh. If anyone can do it, it's Cowboy. Right. But Cowboy can't do it. And she's not going to get branded either. That's bullshit. I bet she does. She's pretty hardcore. No. She's pretty no. hardcore. No. She, she has a that. custom-made BMF brand ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to do that, though? Who's going to brand her? Who's going to physically do that? Donald Cerrone might. Donald Cerrone might. No way, man. Could you I imagine bet he the would. pain? If someone Could walked up with a custom Lionheart brand... I would stick that thing on them so fast. Boom! Right on their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> we, I, that thing would be Christ. red hot. Yeah. No, when you I died and they dug up your bones, you'd see a Lionheart <laughs> brand on it. I'd have that thing so deep. <laughs> <laughs> on the bones. Oh, God. Brian, we got one more. Yeah, we sure do. This one's... A little less fun. This one's from Jordan. Jesus, Jordan. Bring the mood down. Hope I had a good birthday, Bisping. And guys, you know when MMA white, like high level UFC, like does people getting beaten up, does that cause like mental health problems? Like PTSD or I don't know, depression and all that stuff. And how does it how does it get fixed? Because the ne- no one ever talks about like like the mental health part of it, don't I mean? Mm. Was that the extent of the question? Uh, well, thank you. Yeah. I uh, just the way it kind of stopped. It seemed yeah. a bit dramatic. Uh, not dramatic, just a bit sudden. Um, it's a really good question. 
Could you understand him, first of all, Anthony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a strong accent. Yeah. So, <laughs> thick Birmingham accent there, mate. Um, summarise his question, Anthony. Essentially, he was asking if uh, losing high-level mixed martial arts fights causes some mental health problems, and if so, how does it get fixed or how does it go away? Hmm. Um, I think losing yeah. anything causes can cause some mental mental health struggles. I think losing anything that happens at a high level. I think if if you're a high high level day trader working in the stock market and you take a big loss, I think that's probably going to test your mental health. I think losing football games in the NFL. I think and certain in certain individuals, I think losing at any level, whether it's high school wrestling or I just, I think losing in general can, if you don't manage it, um, how's it go away? I don't know. Let me know when you figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I always listen. I, I always did a good job of being able to uh, listen. Of course, big losses affect you and you get sad, but I was always pretty good at brushing it off and, and compartmentalizing it and saying, right. Okay. Well, listen, there was a 50, 50 chance. You know, I would like to think it was 80-20 in my favor, but there was always a 50-50 chance. And this is the game we play. I'm mm -hmm. a man enough to dish it out. Sometimes you've got to be man enough to take it. Mm -hmm. In terms of like, he, did he touch on brain damage and stuff like that? I mean, that's, uh, oh, sorry, he said PTSD. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that CTE, and so that's a completely different kettle of fish and depression. And, you know, it can be linked to that. But in terms of, yeah, for me personally, it was always, as as I just said, if I'm man enough to dish it out, sometimes you got to be man enough to take an ass whopping. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think anything you care about sucks when you lose. And that, like I said, it doesn't have to yeah. be sports. It could be business. It could be relationships. I think the more you care about something and you lose, the mm -hmm. the more it sucks. So, yeah, I think, I, I think in, I mean, I don't want to go down this road too long since we're here at the end, but I think that also the type of people that compete in mixed martial arts uh, matters. Um, I think that we're kind of hardened, maybe not so much these days because I think we're getting a higher level of athletes that come from maybe different backgrounds, but at least from my generation and before, I think a lot of us came from tough backgrounds anyways. We already went through some shit and already, and that's how we ended up here. This was kind of the thing that saved us. So I think that... I think along with that does come maybe some some tougher mental health struggles at times. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I also think that given the emotional stability of fighters in general, mm -hmm. that means you're going to get varying outcomes yeah. of how they deal with those losses. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100%. I mean, like, could you imagine John Jones? Uh, look at look at John Jones. And I'm sorry to bring up John Jones. I'm not trying no, to shit fine. on him. The, the man's the man's the GOAT, right? He's un 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 incredible. Mm -hmm. But he's had his fair share of problems outside of the octagon. Could you imagine how that would be if he was losing fights? <laughs> 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 you know what I'm Look saying? what he does when he gets inducted to <laughs> in the Hall of Fame. Look, look what he's fucking imagine getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. And he's essentially undefeated and fucking never lost a day in his life and <laughs> yeah. doesn't even train and just rocks up. Imagine if he was getting the shit kicked out of him and he had PTSD and CTE. Imagine the shit you'd have on your hands then. <laughs> right. <laughs> so be happy he's winning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Brain. <laughs> Pray that he continues to win. No, the, the, the point that I'm making is that the fighters generally by nature, by definition, are not all of them because we're all individuals, but often we're emotional creatures. And our emotional intelligence yeah. a lot of the time isn't where it needs to be, <laughs> I think. And I think guys what like... Saying, what he I, means is some of us are loose cannons. Yeah, there's a lot of loose cannons. I was one of them. But you see, like, the greats aren't so much. I mean, John Jones for sure is. Yeah. But when you look at Anderson GSP, Silva, yeah, GSP and George Anderson St. Pierre. Are fairly, very, fairly level. Very, very level-headed people. Demetrius mm -hmm. Johnson, another yeah. one. Who Volkanovski. else are boring bastards? No, Volk's not boring, though. No, but he's <laughs> Neither fairly level-headed, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're right. He is level-headed. Yeah. The guys like Max Holloway, fairly level-headed. You know, because mm, you got to think, and the better thinker you are, the better fighter mm -hmm. you will be, and the less chance you have of going off the rails when the losses come. And that 
is the Believe in Me podcast. Guys, thanks for watching. As Harrington said, subscribe and ring the bell. Make sure you do that. We'll be back on Thursday, so don't miss it.